Namaste students. Hope you are all wearing masks, maintaining social distance and safe at home. Welcome to today's mathematics class. Let us see this example. A bag has four white balls and three green balls in it. How many balls are there in that bag? Good, there are seven balls are there in the bag. How did you get that? Okay, by adding four and three you got seven. Shall we see one more example? Good. A box has 12 pens in it. Pregna has taken 7 pens out of them. How many pens are remaining in that box? Well said, there are 5 pens are remaining in that box. How did you get it? Good, 12 minus 7 is equal to 5. Let us see one more example. Do you all like mangoes? Very good. In summer season, you all might have eaten mangoes. Your father has brought some mangoes to your house. You do not know how many mangoes he brought. Let us assume he brought x mangoes. Already 5 mangoes are there in your house. Now, how many mangoes are there in your house? Well said, there are x plus 5 mangoes are there in your house. How did you get this x plus 5? Good, by adding x and 5 you got x plus 5. What do you call this x plus 5? x plus 5 is called an algebraic expression which is formed with the variable x and the constant 5. Let us take one more example. There are some television sets in a shop. We do not know how many televisions are there in the shop. Let us assume why number of televisions are there in the shop. On a particular day, 14 televisions are sold. Then, how many televisions are left out in the shop? Good, there are y minus 14 televisions are left out in the shop. How did you get this? Very good, by subtracting 14 from y, you got y minus 14. You know, this y minus 14 is called an algebraic expression which is formed with the variable y and the constant 14. Have you understood? Good. Is it not interesting children? Good. Shall we take one more example? Right. You know, every time you need to take healthy and nutritious food to improve your immunity and protect yourself from the diseases like COVID-19. Hence, your mother purchased some apples, some bananas, some pineapples and five jackfruits. You do not know how many apples she purchased, how many bananas she purchased, how many pineapples she purchased. Let us assume she purchased x apples, y bananas, z pineapples. Now, can you please tell me how many fruits she purchased? Well said, she purchased x plus y plus z plus 5 fruits. How did you get this? By adding x, y, z and 5, you got x plus y plus z plus 5. 
do you know what do you call this x plus y plus z plus 5? Good, this x plus y plus z plus 5 is called an algebraic expression which is formed with the variables x, y, z and the constant 5. Today, we will learn one of the interesting topics algebraic expressions and identities. Are you ready? Good. Algebraic expressions and identities. Algebraic expressions are formed from variables and constants. We use the fundamental operations on the variables and constants to form expressions. Can you give some examples of algebraic expressions? You are right, x plus 3, 2 y minus 5, 3 x square, 4 x y plus 7, etcetera or some of the examples of algebraic expressions. Number line and an expression. We now try to represent the algebraic expression x plus 5 on the number line. Consider the expression x plus 5. Let us say the variable x has a position x on the number line. x may be anywhere on the number line, but it is definite that the value of x plus 5 is given by a point p, 5 units to the right of x. Similarly, the value of x minus 4 will be 4 units to the left of x and so on. This is how we can represent the expression x plus 5 on the number line. Similarly, we will try to represent 4 x and 4 x plus 5 on the number line. The position of 4 x will be point c as shown in the figure. The distance of c from the origin will be 4 times the distance of x from the origin. The position d of 4 x plus 5 will be 5 units to the right of c. Terms, factors and coefficients. Let us recall what you have learnt in your 7th standard. The parts of an expression which are formed separately are known as terms. The numerical factor is said to be the numerical coefficient or simply the coefficient. Let us now take the expression 4 x plus 5. Can you tell me the terms in the expression 4 x plus 5? Well said, 4 x and 5 or the terms of the expression 4 x plus 5. The term 4 x is a product of factors 4 and x. Can you identify the coefficients of each term in the expression 7 x y minus 5 x? You are right. The coefficient of the term 7 x y is 7. The coefficient of the term minus 5 x is minus 5. Based on the number of terms in the expression, we classify them as follows. They are monomials, binomials, trinomials and polynomials. Let us now recall what you have learnt about monomials, binomials, trinomials and polynomials in your 7th standard. An expression that contains only one term is called a monomial. 4 x square, 3 x y, minus 7 z, 5 x y square, 10 y, minus 9, 82 m n p, etcetera or the examples of monomials. An expression that contains 
two terms is called a binomial. Examples are a plus b 4 l plus 5 m a plus 4 5 minus 3 x y z square minus 5 a plus b 4 l plus 5 m a plus 4 5 minus 3 x y z square minus 4 y square etcetera or the examples of binomials. An expression that contains three terms is called a trinomial a plus b plus c 2 x plus 3 y minus 5 x square y minus x y square plus y square etcetera are the examples of trinomials. In general, we can say if an expression contains more than one term with non-zero coefficients and with variable having non-negative exponents is called a polynomial. Let us see some examples of polynomials a plus b plus c plus d 7 x y z minus 10 2 x plus 3 y plus 7 z etcetera or the some of the examples of polynomials. Now, can you give me some examples of monomial, binomial, trinomial and polynomial? You are right 3 x y minus 7 z 5 x y square 10 y minus 9 82 m n p etcetera are the examples of monomials a plus b 4 l plus 5 m a plus 4 5 minus 3 x y etcetera are the examples of binomials 2 x plus 3 y minus 5 x square y minus x y square plus y square etcetera are the examples of trinomials a plus b plus c plus d 7 x y z minus 10 2 x plus 3 y plus 7 z etcetera are the examples of polynomials. Now, we will try to classify the following polynomials as monomial, binomial and trinomials minus z plus 5 x plus y plus z y plus z plus 100 a b minus a c and 17. Here 17 is a monomial since it has only one term minus z plus 5 a b minus a c are the binomials since they have two terms x plus y plus z y plus z plus 100 are trinomials since they have three terms. Similarly, try yourself to classify the following polynomials as monomial, binomial and trinomial. These are the polynomials x plus y 1000, x plus x square plus x cube plus x power 4, 7 plus y plus 5 x, 2 y minus 3 y square, 2 y minus 3 y square plus 4 y cube, 5 x minus 4 y plus 3 x y, 4 z minus 15 z square, a b plus b c plus c d plus d a, p q r, p square q plus p q square, 2 p plus 2 q. Do you remember like terms and unlike terms which you learnt in your 7th standard? Good. Let us recall now. Terms which have the same algebraic factors are called the like terms. For example, 12 x minus 25 x etcetera. Terms which have the different algebraic factors are called the unlike terms. For example, minus 25 x minus 25 y etcetera. Like and unlike terms 
We now try to identify like and unlike terms of the following 7x, 14x, minus 13x, 5x square, 7y, 7xy, minus 9y square, minus 9x square, minus 5yx. Out of them, like terms are 7x, 14x, minus 13x, because these terms have the same algebraic factor x. 5x square minus 9x square are also like terms, because these terms have the same algebraic factor x square. 7xy minus 5yx are also like terms, because these terms have the same algebraic factors x, y. 7x and 7y are unlike terms, because they have different algebraic factors x, y. 7x and 7xy are unlike terms, because they have different algebraic factors x and x, y. 7x, 5x square are unlike terms, because they have different algebraic factors x, x square. Also, try yourself to write two unlike terms for the following. Addition and subtraction of the algebraic expressions. Let us now recall how to add the algebraic expressions which you learnt in your 7th standard. Are you ready? Good. Add 7 x square minus 4 x plus 5 and 9 x minus 10. Observe how we do the addition. We write each expression to be added in a separate row. While doing so, we write like terms one below the other and add them as shown. Also, in the second expression, there is no x square term. So, we write 0 x square. After adding, we get 7 x square plus 5 x minus 5 as the result. Let us now add 7 x square minus 4 x plus 5 and 9 x minus 10 by using alternative method. Please observe, we have written the terms within the brackets. They are 7 x square minus 4 x plus 5 plus 9 x minus 10, which is equal to 7 x square minus 4 x plus 9 x plus 5 minus 10. Here we have written like terms together. Please observe, we have taken x as common from the terms minus 4 x and 9 x, which is equal to 7 x square plus 5 x minus 5. Now, if you observe both the methods, we got the same result, is not it? Now, you try to add the following expressions on your own by using both the methods. A B minus B C, B C minus C A, C A minus A B. Let us recall how to subtract algebraic expressions which you had learnt in your 7th standard. Let us take this simple problem. Subtract 4 from 9. How you can do this? Good. We write 9 below that minus 4, that is equal to 5. That is, we write second term first, under that the minus symbol, then first term and then subtract, we got the result 5. Let us see the alternative method, subtract 4 from 9. How you can do this? We write 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. That is, we write second term first, followed by minus symbol, 
then first term and then subtract, we got the result 5. If you observe in both the methods, we got the same result, is not it? We now see one more problem, subtract 4a minus 7ab plus 3b plus 12 from 12a minus 9ab plus 5b minus 3. We first solve this problem by using the first method. As we discussed in the above problem, observe how we do in the subtraction. We write the second expression on the top and write the first expression under that. While doing so, we write like terms one below the other and subtract as shown. We know that subtracting a number is nothing but adding its additive inverse. So, while subtracting an expression, we write the additive inverse symbol in front of each of the second expression and then add them to the like times of the first expression. So, you get the result as 8a minus 2ab plus 2b minus 15. Let us try to solve the same problem by the second method. Subtract 4a minus 7ab plus 3b plus 12 from 12a minus 9ab plus 5b minus 3. As we discussed in the above problem, observe how we do the subtraction. We write second expression first followed by minus symbol then first expression. We know that subtracting a number is nothing but adding its additive inverse. So, while subtracting an expression, we write the additive inverse symbol in front of each of the second expression and then add them to the like terms of the first expression. If you do so, you will get the result 8a minus 2ab plus 2b minus 15. Did you observe in both the methods we got the same result? You now try to solve the following problem on your own. Subtract 4a minus 7ab plus 3b plus 12 from 12a minus 9ab plus 5b minus 3. Multiplication of algebraic expressions. Introduction. Let us observe some patterns. Please observe in the first box. To find the total number of dots, we have to multiply the number of dots in each column by the number of dots in each row. By doing this, we get the total number of dots in the first box is 4 into 9. Similarly, the total number of dots in the second box is 5 into 7. In the third box, each column has m dots and each row has n dots. Hence, the total number of dots in this box is m into n. In the last box, each column has m plus 2 dots and each row has n plus 3 dots. Hence, the total number of dots in this box is m plus 2 times n plus 3. Can you think of similar situations in which two algebraic expressions are to be multiplied? Let us consider the following example. We can think of area of a rectangle. The area of a rectangle is L into B, where L is the length and B is breadth. If the length of the rectangle is increased by 5 units, that is L plus 5, and the breadth is decreased by 3 units that is b minus 3. 
the area of new rectangle will be L plus 5 times B minus 3. Similarly, for finding the volume of a cube, we need to multiply its length, breadth and height. You can now think of more situations where we use multiplication of algebraic expressions. In all the above examples, we had to carry out the multiplication of two or more quantities. If the quantities are given by algebraic expressions, we need to find their product. This means we should know how to obtain their product. Let us do this systematically. We now try to learn the next higher level of the fundamental operation that is multiplication of algebraic expressions. We have classified the terms of algebraic expressions as monomials, binomials, trinomials and polynomials. How can we do multiplication using these terms? We can have the following combinations. They are monomial by a monomial, monomial by a binomial, monomial by a trinomial, monomial by a polynomial, binomial by a monomial, binomial by a binomial, binomial by a trinomial. To begin with, we shall look at the multiplication of two monomials. Case 1, multiplying a monomial by a monomial. Let us look at this example. 4 into x is equal to x plus x plus x plus x, which is equal to 4x. Similarly, 4 into 3x is equal to 3x plus 3x plus 3x plus 3x, which is equal to 12x. Note that both the products of monomials 4x and 12x are also monomials. Let us see one more example. 5x into 4x square is equal to 5 into 4 times x into x square, which is equal to 20 into x cube, that is 20x cube. Here we note 5 into 4 is equal to 20, that is coefficient of the product is equal to coefficient of the first monomial into the coefficient of the second monomial and x into x square is equal to x cube, that is algebraic factor of product is equal to algebraic factor of first monomial into algebraic factor of second monomial. Observe that how we collect the powers of different variables in the algebraic parts of two monomials. While doing so, we use the rules of exponents and powers. Let us see one more example. Complete the table for area of a rectangle with given length and breadth. We now recall area of the rectangle is length into breadth. In the first case, area of the rectangle is equal to 3x into 5y that is equal to 15xy. Whereas in the second case, area of the rectangle is equal to 9y into 4y square which is equal to 36y cube. Whereas in the third case, area of the rectangle is 4ab into 5bc is equal to 20ab square c. Coming to the last case, area of the rectangle is equal to 2l square m into 3l m square, which is equal to 6l cube m cube. Now, find yourself. The product of the following pairs of monomials 4p cube and minus 3p. Second problem, find the area of rectangle 
with the following pairs of monomials as their length and breadth respectively 20 x square and 5 y square. Now, case 2, let us now learn how to multiply 3 or more monomials. Let us see this example 2 x into 5 y into 7 z is equal to 2 x into 5 y into 7 z that is equal to 10 x y into 7 z which is nothing but 70 x y z. It is clear that we first multiply the first two monomials and then multiply the resulting monomial by the third monomial. This method can be extended to the product of any number of monomials. Now, try yourself 2 a x into 3 b y into 5 c z. Case 3, we now learn how to multiply a monomial by a binomial. Let us consider this example, find 3 x times 5 y plus 2. Using the distributive law, we get 3 x times 5 y plus 2 is equal to 3 x into 5 y plus 3 x into 2, which is equal to 15 x y plus 6 x. Now, find yourself the product of 2 x times 3 x plus 5 x y. Case 4, let us learn how to multiply a binomial by a monomial. Let us consider this example, 5 y plus 2 times 3 x is equal to how much? Let us see that. We may use commutative law as 7 into 3 is equal to 3 into 7. Am I right? Or in general, a into b is equal to b into a. Similarly, 5 y plus 2 into 3 x is equal to 3 x times of 5 y plus 2, which is equal to 3 x plus 5 y plus 3 x into 2. That is nothing but 15 x y plus 6 x. Now, try to find yourself the product of a plus b and 7 a square b square. Case 5, we now learn how to multiply a monomial by a trinomial. Let us consider this example, 3 p times 4 p square plus 5 p plus 7. As in the earlier case, we use distributive law here, 3 p times 4 p square plus 5 p plus 7 is equal to 3 p into 4 p square plus 3 p into 5 p plus 3 p into 7, which is equal to 12 p cube plus 15 p square plus 21 p. We multiplied each term of the trinomial by the monomial and added the products. Hence, we observe by using the distributive law, we are able to carry out the multiplication term by term. Now, you try to find the following product by yourself. 4 p square plus 5 p plus 7 into 3 p. Let us summarize what we have learned in today's class. We have learned what is an algebraic expression and with which it is formed. We have seen some examples of algebraic expressions. We learn to represent algebraic expression on the number line. We have seen terms of algebraic expressions. We have identified coefficient of each term in the algebraic expression. We have learnt the definition of monomial, binomial, trinomial and polynomial. We identified like and unlike terms of a given set of polynomials. 
we have learned how to add and subtract the algebraic expressions. We have also learned how to multiply a monomial by a monomial, a monomial by a binomial, a monomial by a trinomial. Hope you enjoyed today's class. We will meet in the next class. Wear mask, maintain social distance, stay at home and be safe. Thank you.